this video here boys it's all about weaning the youngsters some people have got different methods i like to take the birds out pretty young look at about there some of them have just come out today they do look a little bit young but you i'll keep i'll keep a pro i'll keep you uh, posted on these in the next two to three weeks and these will be different pigeons in a well even in another week there'll be a different pigeon I like, I like to feed them a good quality maple pea, as you can see in there. Good quality maple pea. Let's get you a quick scan of these before I... Just so you can get a rough idea of the ages of them and that. They're not too old at all, them, are they? Look at them. Like I said, I've just pulled a few about a nest. There is a couple in there. I pulled a couple out two, three days ago, a couple up top up there. But yeah, the benefits of pulling them out at this age, you're not stressing the cocks in the stock loft. They could get on with, 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 with sitting in the nest, they're not having a pest of the young, you know what I mean? I think even with, uh, the don't, I think the young come along a lot better out of the stock loft, eating and fending for themselves and learning the traits of the, of the kit boxes. This, like I said to you in the other videos, I do bring them out here. I, I let them out in the area and every time I'm feeding birds, every time I'm feeding the birds, they're always looking down learning. I always check the tin as I'm going in. I give a bit of a whistle so they know when it's feed time. And like I say, this, these will be about three week old, so with it, most of these now, three and a half week old. They've got all the immunity out of the cock from the parents at the colstrum. So I just don't see any point in keeping them in there too long. They just get, it stresses the parents out. And like I say, I think they just come on a lot better by themselves, eating them peas as you'll, as, as you'll see in a, in a little while. What I do, I do keep my eye on them, um, just for like water and stuff like that. But like I said, there's, I don't, You'd be surprised these birds are quite smart. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't put no feeders in with them or out like that. You know what I mean? The, uh, give it a couple of days and I'll, I'll check the crops, make sure they've all got plenty of peas in them and make sure they're all drinking water. Sometimes you do have, have to have a little look at them. If their eyes are squinting, I'll, I might put the occasional youngsters head in the drinker. I'm going to put the drinker back in there a bit. I just took it out like that over there at the back there. Looks a bit squinty, doesn't it? See the one at the back there? He's squinting up a little bit. Sometimes I might just... What I'll do with him, I'll just put his, give him a, put his head in the drinker. I've just took the drinker out for the minute so you can have a look what's going on in there. But yeah, you might think they're a bit young, but you look at these in about in two to three weeks' time. Well, well in fact, I've gone through the other, other kits there and showed you them. I just put that little bit of cardboard there so they, so they can stand on some as they're eating and the rest of it so the white, the sheep just go straight through into the tray there. They do waste a few peas on that in there, don't I mean? But yeah. Be able to know it's only a few bees. We've got to get used to it. But this is my little weaning box and purchase a the, the square purchase so the birds can stand them a lot better. The other ones I've got the dowels in, the other ones like the back ones there, but and have the water. Just grab the water and put the water in for them. So that's how I leave these birds here. They've got the water, they've got the peas, the good quality maple peas. Just let them settle in there, do you know what I mean? And like I said, just keep an eye on them, make sure they're all eating and drinking. Just, like I said, you look for the squinting eyes, for the, the water, you can feel the crop. I'll feel the crop on these tomorrow, they'll all be full of peas. And a lot of them have never even eaten by themselves before. But yeah, the benefits of weeding, taking them out of that stock loft is, well, it's a no-brainer to me. The birds just bounce, bounce off the maple piece, they do. <laughs> I 
Hi right, boys, this is a quick, quick update. This is that young kit. The, um, this is two days, two days since the last video. Just a little update. Look at, that. look at them looking, looking a bit better already. There is a couple of what I put in here yesterday, but um, all in all, you know what I mean. I'll give you a bit of a closer look at them. Even in a couple of days, they look so different, don't they? Bastards. That's it, you've got to keep your eyes for them, keep your eyes open for birds with squinting eyes. Uh, there's that checker there, look, look if I'll zoom in on that a little bit. That looks a bit droopy there, look, see what I mean there? I just look out for stuff like that and sometimes just put the head in the water. Sometimes some of them don't cover up that water as quick as the other ones. But look at the flapping about there. Look totally different version of two days, don't they? I did put two of, I did, I put two or three back in here yesterday, so there is a couple of but look at them, the fire of them perches. Another week, these will be totally different pigeons. It's all down to them things there. Good quality maple beans. And like I said, I just did take the water out of them. There. And a lot of the time, they do bunch up. When I, when I come near the door here, a lot of the time, they're all up near the front and feeding on the things there. I just put the water back in from there. So that's how I, I set it up here. But mate, you will not recognize these pigeons. In another two, well, even another week, ten days, they'll be totally different pigeons. Hey boys, just a quick update on these uh, these youngsters here. These have been probably in here now what uh, a week today since I weaned them last last week on the maples. Feel a bit inquisitive, aren't they? Look at the turnaround in them in a week on the maple pairs, I swear by them. Like I say, it's a, it's a no brainer. There is a couple in here, like the little blue in the middle there. They've been in probably in about, them two there are actually to the left in front of me now. They've probably been in about three, three four days. I uh, just added them two, they, you don't get them all out at the same time, so they've been a little bit different. But, but look at the condition on these birds after a, after a week on them maples. And like I say, this is it's a, it's a no-brainer to me. You know I mean, just training them like this. Every time you're feeding a kitty in that fly pen, there. <laughs> Look at them getting a bit flighty there. Look at them looking. <laughs> Look at them flighty, aren't they? Look at condition of them here. Beautiful looking pigeons out there. But yeah, like I said, so it's a no-brainer. The, when you feed, I feed, feed the birds in the, in the fly pen here, they're looking down. Every time you're shaking, whistling the tin, it's just a no-brainer, you know what I mean? And these, what I'll give them about another, I used, to, I used to keep them on the maples for about three weeks, and then I'll worm them out. But just three weeks, they just, they just get that mad apple body. You know what I mean? The maple peats, very, very good protein, probably one of the better peas you'll get. But yeah, I just thought I'd give you a quick update there. The birds are bouncing out. Look at this little thing, it don't want to go, does it? <laughs> but yeah, just a little quick update on the birds, boys. Maple, go on the maples. I'm just going to put these back in now. Come on, get in. <laughs> it don't want to go, does it? <laughs> well, there's a few more just jumped out up here. Look at the last city before I do open that fly pen for these. I do open the fly pen for them. 
when I'm working, so they, they, get, they get to come out here anywhere. But yeah, I just feel I'll give you a quick update there. I just uh, I don't usually run out of these maples. I usually keep them stocked up, but uh, I did. I just put some in there now. But yeah, to see these birds, I've never seen them before. Uh, pulled them out, nest a lot of them. I look, I'm getting tucked into the maples there. And they seem to eat them quite easy, don't they? You can see that kit of youngsters there. They were wind about. They were just uh, about 10 days ago. You know, what I do, sometimes I just put them in the air to get them out of the kit box so they're looking around. They also get that bit of sunlight, that bit of sunlight is very important for them. Just get some out of the kit box. And what I'll do in about another week's time, I'll probably worm these. I'll worm them out. But yeah, from what, what, what were it, 10 days ago to the last last video, they've come on heaps and bounds, aren't they, with their maple peas? Let's see if we can give you a bit of a better look at them. Look. Bit of sunlight there, aren't they, but you get the general gist of them, don't you? I'll probably bring about 100, 120 youngsters a year. This is you lose a fair few of the falcons over here. And like I say, the, the ends are getting a little bit old, so I'll just mix and match them. I like to keep, yeah, well, like I say, I, I don't stock many birds a year now. I'd be lucky if I stock two or three birds a year. Before I was stocking a few more just to keep the, the lines of birds, the hens over the cocks, different combinations. But right now I'm just looking for the better birds out of the out of the bunch at the end of the year. I will say now there's a lot of a lot of pigeons coming to Australia over the years. A lot of like I say, even when Heiner sent his birds over, I don't rate, I don't think Heiner would have sent rubbish over here. But there's, they, I don't know they come to Australia; they just don't seem to last. A lot of people will pay hundred bucks for a bird. And they think it's got to go in the stock loft. You know, I mean, like, it's a good idea to fly them out, but yeah, no, there's, there's the Masons have come over, the Hyners, the Harpers, the Lunas. There's been a lot of lines over here. But yeah, what's about now? You know, I mean, they might have them all mixed in, but. Yeah, I think well, they pay 100 bucks for a bird and they think they've got a breed from it. Yeah, you know I mean, and that just turns the line to rubbish, if you ask me. You're breeding from calls from day dot, so what do you expect? This is that young kit here. This is two weeks today since the big win. You know what you've got really to appreciate you've got to feel the body on them. These, the body on these birds now, they like, they like them being on steroids. What I'll, be, what I'll do today now, um, I'll probably worm these out this afternoon and whack them in the air But yeah, just, just you, you, know, you don't appreciate them, but like if you felt the body on them, like, look, let's look at them. Two weeks, that's two weeks ago, they were, I got the parents two weeks ago. But just look at the apple bodies on them, look at the um, maple paper, they've got to them. Um, yeah, just, uh, it's just a no brainer, but yeah, I'm going to cross it off. I don't think handling the birds is going to do you much for you, but just look at the body on them, on these birds. Beautiful 
think they'll like say, what I'll do today, I'm going to take these out, what, uh, put a Parazol tablet down the neck. Parazol tablet. It's got that Levisimol in it. It's got Prazipontu in it. It's a tablet where you just put down the neck. It's one of the best wormers going around. You know, every bird's being wormed. Look at them getting a bit flighty out there. That's what, yeah, that's my plan today. I'll show you the procedure, what I do with them. Tablet at the back of that front right in the first person. That's the first person to go. Yeah, look, look at the hand on that water. Yeah, they took, what is it now? That will be the bay. Five week old. If you just, just feel the body on a look at, look at that as well. And I'll probably leave him in here another week now. And just you, just the maple trees. Look at the condition of the young. Worm them out now, they'll put a bit more weight on. And they'll be ready to start flying in a couple of weeks. Each. Yeah, Levisimol and 7.5 milligrams of uh, Prasipontal. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, five, uh, yeah, five milligrams of Prasipontal. That's the tablet there, look, it's a little big tablet. They say I give them half, but I just give them a full on. Yeah, I've never had no problems with them.
your face, won't you? Absolute splash up there, boys, aren't they? Flighting now, aren't they? With a minute ago. Like I say, I'll keep them on the maples for about three and a half weeks. And then I'll, I'll, I'll get them a little bit hungry before I let them out, otherwise, I'll just sit on the roof and watch you. So I'll keep it that kit, bottom kit box. Just drop the food right back, just start them on the wheat. And start training them, training them on the wheat. Leave them on the ground for about a week, ten days. Then I'll start pushing them up. But yeah, that's that's weaning on the on the maple peas. Probably about three and a half weeks ago. But look at condition on these birds now. It's a win-win, I think. You know what I mean? Like, don't stress the parents. The parents can get always sitting sit in the nest and protecting the boxes without stressing the feed of the young. Checking, always the, the whistle. I always whistle them too. Get this stick here. This stick. This will tell you when to go, when, when, when to go out, when to, when to go back in the kit box, when to fly. Very important tool in the roll. As like I say, it's, it's only a piece of PVC, but it gets a good workout. This is the boss in this kit in this cage. Get them nice and hungry, get them chasing the feed. 
And even when, even the wheeling key works, we we'll have to be really there for a week. I do open the, the key box there, so they could fly around the, the penny here when I go to work. So, and then when I come back in, I just tap this stick on the floor, the straight back in that key box, even they know where they're going. Discipline, that's what you want in the birds. Talk about discipline is just the bloody road packer. Just another little thing here. The tablets I gave them yesterday. They call it a, I don't know if you can see that, it's like a parasol tablet. It's a little pink tablet. It's got that little visible roll. And prize the quantum in it. They say I give them half a tablet, but I just give them a full tablet. It seems to clear them out and I've never had no problems with it. One of the best worming products you'll get, you know, everything's being wormed, you're not sticking the head in the water or you handle every bird, you make sure I put it, handle every bird, put it down the tablet down its throat, but you know everything has been wormed. And then a couple of weeks later, I might just take the water away and give them all a good drink.
he's always played up a little bit, but this is getting a bit flighter. I'll start pushing these out, start pushing these out the bin in this key box for about two weeks on the, on the peas. I'll start pushing them out shortly. Just trying to okay, youngsters here. This is probably the second, second, third, second time they've been out. Anyone knows? They are semi kitted, they've come out semi kitted. Well, give them another week. These are my kitten like demons. Sometimes they kit hard. They're sort of getting it together there now, but. Some, some kits just jar straight away, some kits just take a little bit longer, but uh, you don't have to flag them up much. I think it all comes out of the birds where you stock. You stock the rubbish, you get the rubbish. I like to fly the birds out for at least a couple of years. to select the right stuff. It's hard, it's hard for to feel with these at the minute. This is the third time this kit's been out. Look at the kit in there. Third time they've been out. Probably about, what? Three month old. Ten week, three month old, somewhere around there. But the th third time they've been up flying. You see the little bit as you're going. Look at them today. They still will drop apart, I think, but. Beautiful cloudy day for flying rollers here. time these birds have been up but look at the discipline around there that's what I like I'm landing on the stock, stock roof but yeah it's all about training with these little things I like to leave them leave them 10 15 minutes I don't even like them picking around the yard I give them 10, 10 minutes up there just to get the bearings a little bit and get back get the breath back not too bad they're not panicking on that it's, it's quite cool today yeah Yeah, that's the second time these birds have been up and look at them, all landing on the stock roof. These are probably the best pigeons in Australia, best pigeons in Australia. And you can't get to fly them through jealous people. Which is pretty sad for the sport really. This morning, these will probably be about not one far. 
car. There's two other cars. Okay. Tree tops. Lavender bell neck thing there on the front corner. What a pigeon. This the style of rolling it fast as you like. Went in and come out absolutely perfect. What a pigeon. Stand out pigeon out of this kit to take it through. This is good quality in here, but that just blew me away, that bird. And now look at what's the chase ends. <laughs>
outstanding pigeons there. Very good quality. From away. Lavender bell like that, what a pigeon. Very good quality birds. See if do, these do as we're told with the stick, eh? That last one there should be in this kit, that one in car there, it's a used to one for the last time. Team Cox, just on the back end of the malt now, so we're on the last flight is. What I usually do with the malt, I usually give them a, some, some garlic oil, some, some hemp seed. I mix a few oils together and I put some probiotics in the seed. I also put um, a protein powder, what you use for feeding young pigeons. I mix a bit of that into protein is, is feather. Look at the condition on these things. Nice and active. These are probably the best pigeons in Australia. You don't get to fly them for certain people. A few people are jealous of the pigeons. It's easier to kick you out of a club than it is to try and beat you. It's just a sad day for Birmingham rollers. When people's egos take over the performance of the pigeon. And it's supposed to be about the pigeons, not people. But yeah, we're over in Australia, they're a different breed. I think it's more about the batting their own chest than it is the pigeons' performance. But yeah, I'm just going through a bit of these here. Like, as you can see, a few of these are marked up uh, with a pen. There's many ways you can mark a pigeon. Right, left, left wing, right wing, mid tail, right tail, left tail. And what I usually do is just use a put when I'm flying them, they're a lot easier to identify. And what I'll do and all, when I, when I bring these birds over, I'll put one, one ring on them. And when they've been in this, like I said, well, I'll put one ring on them. And what I do then, I'll fly this kit out. And I, I expect every bird to stick to that kit like glue. Sometimes these birds only get flown twice a week. You know, I don't fly them all the time. But if, if they let me down, if they get lazy, they just go back in there back in another kit and they don't get upgraded for a very long time. In fact, they, they might not get upgraded again. These birds in here, I could, I could not fly them for three weeks. I'll put them back in, they'll go up together and they'll come down together. Every one of them land on the kit box roof. And there's no danger in them whatsoever. There's some outstanding pigeons in there. And, it, and that's what I, like I said, then I'll put one blue ring on them after a while if they stood out to me a few times I'll double ring them like you might see a few double rings in these birds in here but that, that, that lavender thing there I haven't even got a ring on at the minute but what an outstanding pigeon that is just the roll on it it's absolutely perfect but yeah look, look, none of these birds in here will let you down they'll all go up and fly with a kit and, and break in big numbers 
that's what I say, it's just about, a bit sad when it's people's, people get mixed up with pigeons and performers and egos, but hey, what do you do? I see how it goes on around the world. There's some very outstanding pigeons in there. A few of them have been in there a very long time. Look, look at the condition on them. They're absolutely blowing out there. Yeah, that's the A-Team Cox boys. Gets a lot of people worried, these pigeons, but it is what it is, isn't it?
couple of covers over there, but there's the soldiers. 